Vayakel Pekude, I believe Parsha Sachodesh also maybe, and we are finishing off the book of Exodus, the book of Shemos. And Vayakel begins with the discussion of actually laws of Shabbos, and then it goes back to what it's been discussing for the past couple of Parshas from Truma to Tzaba. It goes into, into the Mishkan and, the, and accessories. In fact, Chazal tell us, and they make a similar drusher, drusher in part we had last week in Parshas Kisisa, that what do we learn from the Semichos HaParshios between Shabbos and Mishkan? So Chazal tell us that even though we know how important Melechus HaMishkan, Binyan, Binyan HaMishkan is, However, it's not Docha Shabbos. That when you're building the Mishkan, it's a great mitzvah, but like all mitzvahs, in the appropriate time, and you always have to weigh the the two values in the mitzvah, the, the issue of Shabbos versus building the Mishkan. So Chazal tell us that the building of the Mishkan supersedes Shabbos. And actually, it's a beautiful Meshachachma, where it actually points out an appearing um, contradiction and it was an answer. Because why over here do we say Shabbos um, beats our Mishkan? Since Shabbos is mentioned first, so therefore we see Shabbos takes precedence over the Mishkan. He says, if that's true, if you look at Parshas Kisisa, it's the opposite. It talks about the Mishkan before Shabbos. So it's, it's mashma from there that the Binyan HaMishkan was Docha Shabbos. So Ramesh HaChachma has an interesting um, pshah where he says, well, it depends when. He says, before the Cheda Egel, so he said, the building of the Mishkan was Docha Shabbos. It was only after that they sinned with the Cheda Egel, so then it no longer took, so, so Binyan HaMishkan never took the place of, um, never, never overrided Shabbos. And he goes into and, you know, he goes into perhaps different reasons why would that be true? Because um, I guess before the Cheda Ego, you had the Shechina. So you didn't, so therefore you had the Shechina, as I think the Pasuk says, that God was, you know, everywhere. You know, Uncle Maishi, God is everywhere. And the Mishkan, like in a certain sense, obviously God is still everywhere, but it's more limited, like it's a more focused. So before the Mishkan, so, he got, you know, you, you always had God, so therefore it wasn't a problem. You had the Shechina, so therefore you could build the Mishkan on Shabbos. But now, after the Cheda Ego, so the Shechina went away, so therefore, if you, you're not going to, you know, so at least you need Shabbos, which also represents, you know, six days a week, one works, and the seventh day is so we need at least one of them. So but obviously, but Bizman Azel, we only know from the standard Chazal, notwithstanding the Mesha Chachma, that Binyan HaMishkan does not supersede Shabbos. In fact, there's a beautiful Chasim Sofer on this. He talks about the different levels of Kedusha we have. In Judaism, we have many types of Kedusha. We have Kedushas HaMakom, Sanctity of Place, the Beis HaMikdash, the Mishkan, the Beis HaKnesses. You have Kedusha Sazman, Sanctity of Time, Shabbos, Yontiv. And then you have Kedusha Saguf. A Jew himself has Kedusha, a human, human being, Selim or Kim. You're born in the image of God, we have Kedusha. So the Chasim Sofer is a beautiful Pshadi, he says, So what is that Lacha? We, that the Gemara tells us in Yuma, what about, well, the Gemara, well, yeah, the Gemara in Yuma talks about what about Pikuach Nefesh on Shabbos. The Gemara tells us that Pikuach Nefesh is Doche Shabbos. That Pikuach, and in fact, it's the famous Misa with Rav Salavechik, with his father of Moshe and his grandfather of Chaim, I guess it was in Europe, and I guess, I guess um, the, it happened to the rubs. I guess he remembers the Shiloh was a cut and has name on it, so maybe it was a gadol. But I don't know how old he was, but the story was, I guess he was a little sick on Shabbos, or I don't know how sick or not. I guess that 
it's unclear. And Rav Moshe called the doctor. So is he sick enough where he called the doctor? And you, you remember back in the day, we used to have house calls. You probably don't know from that. The doctors used to come to the house to make visits because it makes sense. Like the kids are sick, you're going to bring them out in minus 20 in the snow, and you're going to sit in an office where everyone else is sick. So back in the day, house calls. And even when I came here, there was a certain doctor who still did house calls. Dr. Jacobs, you know, um, his wife's actually in Cholom Village, but um, his, he used to be my kid's doctor. So either way, so the luck is, so he went, he called the doctor, so Ramosha, so actually Rav Chaim, who was the grandfather, said to, um, actually, uh, yeah, so, so I guess it was Rav Chaim, or they switched the names around, but so Rav Chaim said to the doctor, do you need us to turn a light on? Do you need any light? So the doctor, I don't know if he was actually turning on the light, moving the light, you know, it depends what, what, what kind of malacha we're talking about here. I guess depending on how sick he thought the child was. So he said, um, do you need any light? So the doctor said, it can't hurt, or I don't, you know, something along those lines. Or So Rav Chaim to Rav Moshe, you know, whatever, move the light, turn it, whatever the case was. And Rav Moshe hesitated. So Rav Chaim started screaming at him, you api karish, you heretic, piktuach nefesh, it's doch hashab, you know. So basically the point being is, we know, and of course, briskers are known for the chumras, so they always ask Rav Chaim, so if you're so machmir, why were you so meiko on Hilcha Shabbos? So he gave his classic line is, I'm not being meiko on Hilcha Shabbos, I'm by, being machmer in Hilchus Pikuach Nefesh. So the point being is, and the Gemara tells us, in Yuma Pikuach Nefesh Docha Shabbos. And in fact, the Gemara marshals different sources for it. One opinion in the Gemara, we learn it out from Mila, that if Mila is Docha Shabbos, and that only involves one organ in your body, and yet we say it's Docha Shabbos, so how much more so um, your whole body? Again, that's assuming, I mean, you're not, maybe that's assuming after the Mila you might be, you're a Chola already. Because, I mean, you're not doing Mila because you're a Chola, per se. At least not a Chola HaGuf. Not, you might be a Chola, you know, Chola HaNefesh, but either way. So they point, that's, anyway, that's the source of the Gemara. A second source the Gemara gives is a Pasuk we read last week, but that's not why it's famous. It's famous because of you know, Friday night davening. And we have a Sham Ruben Eiso as a Shabbos, and we say it also in the Shimon Esrei. That's Bisham Ruben Eiso Shabbos, Eiso Shabbos, but also in Risalam, to the famous um, Pasik, and the Gemara makes a drasha, Chalo, better to Machal Shabbos Achas, Kedei Lishmor Shabbos Harbe, better to Machal one Shabbos, so you can keep many more. And there was someone is sick, and the, so either you to Machal Shabbos or someone else, so you're allowed to Machal Shabbos to save someone because better Machal Shabbos Achas could they wish more Shabbos is Harbe. And the third source the Gemara gives is Vachai Bahem, the low, and then Vachai Bahem, yeah, the Torah is a Torah Chayim, and in contrast to other religions where they glorify death, in Judaism we glorify life. And therefore, the Chaybahem saved the big three. If someone puts a gun to you and says, worship idols, murder someone, commit adultery, save the big three, one has a mitzvah, that pikuach nefesh is doch, a human life takes precedence over everything. So the Gemara marshals three sources by Mila, by better than Machal Shabbos Achas, Kadei Lishma Shabbos Zarbe, and Machai Behem, so in fact, the Sitz says, says, why does the Gemara have to give three sources for the same point? So we'll see, the Gemara gives, we'll see the post can go into different Afghaminas between them. But, but the Sitz says, to point out, because we know the Gemara tells us elsewhere, one who is Machal Shabbos Bifahestia, one who is a public Shabbos desecrator under certain situations, it's Ki'il Oved Avarazara. One who publicly desecrates the Shabbos, because Shabbos represents six days, six days a week we work and the seventh day we rest. 
so by resting on Shabbos we're giving Eidos that God created the world and rested so conversely if one works on the Shabbos they're showing uh, it's a denial so I might have thought that since Shabbos is compared to Avodah Zarah and we pointed out Avodah Zarah is one of the big three so therefore maybe you have to give up your life even maybe better to give up your life than Machal Shabbos Dr. the Gemara emphasizes even three at least you know three if not more sources they are telling me that no Pikuach Nefesh is Docha Shabbos and the Rishonim Achronim give perhaps why do we need all three like why one why wouldn't one source um, take care of it so perhaps um, they say maybe Suffolk Pikuach Nefesh let's say we Paskin that even on Suffolk Pikuach Nefesh one has to risk, you know, one has to machal a Shabbos to save someone's eye. Pray. Even a svek sveka, when it comes to bikuach nefesh, we don't take um, we don't take any chances. So, in fact, so perhaps if I didn't, so perhaps from Vishamru, perhaps maybe I only know avadai bikuach nefesh. Okay, if I know, if I know you're going to die, I have to save you. But let's say I'm not sure. The Efa Vachai Ben Goliamas, the post can say, tells me even a Suffolk, even a Suffolk Pikuach Nefesh. Or let's say a classic case would be the case of a fetus. Let's say it's hard to ever practically separate the two, but let's say you had a scenario where you know the mommy wasn't in, in danger at all. Again, we'll probably, we'll, uh, you know, it's probably hard to ever know that beforehand, but let's assume hypothetically that the mother is not in danger at all. The only reason you want a machal of Shabbos is to save the fetus. If you don't save, you know, if you don't do anything, the fetus will die. But there's no danger to mommy. You want a machal of Shabbos to save a fetus. So that's a discussion in the Rishonim, and that's what the Ramban, I think, in the Torah's other brings down this drush. He says, V'shavu v'nei Shabbos, God Better than Machal Shabbos Achas, Le Lishma Shabbos is Harbe. That means so that would apply to a fetus. If we get if we keep the fetus alive, then it will turn into a human being, and a human being will be Chayav and Mitzvahs in keeping Shabbos. So therefore, he, but based on but based on the Chaybahem, no, there's no how he doesn't. The Chaybahem only tells me if you're an Adam. In fact, that's the interesting Nitziv on the Tosas and Baba Mitzia, where there's a story in in Navi with. Eliyahu, there's one with Elisha, with Tchiyas HaMesim, by saying that Amman is home, and again, it's not 100% clear, different Mepharshim, but the Pasha says that the child died. And they asked Eliyahu to save the child. So, Eliyahu did, again, to different sources, he was never dead, but assuming we'll work with the Yisod that he was dead, and Eliyahu did Tchiyas HaMesim on the child, and as the Bali Musa point out, that, you know, a, a, a child born, obviously, is a child born is a greater miracle than Tchiyas HaMesim because it comes from a Tipa Srucha. But uh, Tchiyas HaMesim, it's already there. All you have to do is get it together. But of course, you know, it gets into what's in these, what isn't. But so they point out that, so they, so they point out that the Nitziv writes that the how did the well, it's the Tosis question? How could Elio save the child's life? Did Chiyas Amesim? I Elio is a Kohen. A Kohen can have, is an Issa the Raisa to Mitame Lames. So, so Tosis writes something about Pikuach Nefesh. So, what kind, what kind of Pikuach Nefesh? You know, and Ramosha writes maybe it was Pikuach Nefesh of the mother, but that's where the but that's where I think um, Ramosha has a whole Yisod there because he says. There, there's a chiyav in the Torah of Rofei Cholom. We have an obligation to save someone who's sick. So they have to even to violate Isurim. But there's no mitzvah of chiyas hamesim. So perhaps we have no right. We have no right to go ahead. You can't save some, you know, you can't res- That's why, to- that's why Ramosh has to come on to, it was pikuach nefesh of the mother. Because if not, what's the heter then? And so, but the point being is, and it still points out along those lines, that we see that either by a fetus or by someone's resurrection, they wouldn't have a din of a, there's no din of a nefesh. And if I would know that you're allowed, you know, perhaps by Tchiyas HaMesim you wouldn't be allowed to. That's an open question. That's different sheets in the Rishonim, how you learn that Gemara. 
but it's clear that so the, so the bottom line is the post can go through different sources about when you need it, um, why you need both both psukim. Even though the halacha, the post can seem to go with v'chay um, behem is the main one. Yet in yet the achronim quote the um, shamru to teach us to feed it another halacha. So the bottom line is. We marshal many sources because you might think Chilu Shabbos is like Avodah Zarah. Maybe in a certain way it is, B'machshava and other areas. But in terms of vis-a-vis the din of, of, of giving up your life, Shabbos doesn't have the status of, of, um, of the big three in that area. And therefore, not only is one allowed to Machal Shabbos, one has a mitzvah to Machal Shabbos. So, so getting back to the Chasim Sofer, so the Chassam Sofer points out something beautiful. He says, We learned in Chazal from the Smichas HaParashios that why is Mishkan near Shabbos to teach me? That has, as important as Mishkan is, it's not Docha Shabbos. So that's one principle. We know Mishkan is not Docha Shabbos. Perhaps before the Chet Egel it was, but for our purposes it's not anymore. And we also, another given that the Gemara tells us in Yuma, Pikuach Nefesh is Docha Shabbos. So we have two printers. We know Pikuach Nefesh is Docha Shabbos. And we know Binyan HaMishkan isn't Docha Shabbos. So it comes along the Chasim Sofer and connects the dots. He says, we see a tremendous Yisod, how Chashev every Yid is, how Chashev every Jew is, that every Jew is more chashev than the Mishkan. We all know how the importance of the Mishkan based on Mikdash throughout, but no, it comes nowhere close to the importance of every Jew. What's his Raya? His Raya is from here. That Binyan Mishkan is in Docha Shabbos, but human life is, so what's the logical extension? That clearly human life supersedes um, Binyan Mishkan. And that's the, the different levels of Kedushas. From lower to higher, as we mentioned, Kedushas on Mik. Kedusha Samakam seems to be on the lower level because that, uh, let's say, the Mishkan. Kedusha Samakam Shabbos supersedes even Kedusha Samishkan. And Kedusha Saguf, the Kedusha of a Yid, of a human being, that's on the higher, highest level. As we know, as the Gemara, you know, as, you know every, every Jew is a walking safe for Torah. Even though, as the Gemara says in Makis, how foolish people are, Kama Tipshai that they stand up for a safer Torah, a tash, you know, uh, which had also a Gufa Kedusha, but they don't stand up for Tal uh, Chacham, for someone who, you know, mastered the Torah. And that's what, um, so that's what the Chasim Sofer uh, points out, in, you know, in the different levels of Kedusha, and that's why the, the Rav Salvation always pointed out, why does it, and based on the Rav Chaim Velazhin and Nefesh Achayim, why does the Jew have Kedusha? So even though, is it, why, why do we have more Kedusha than a guy? It's because we have mitzvahs, you know, because we have 613, they have seven. He says, no, it's not to do with the mitzvahs. Even though we say, mitzvahs do play a role, but in terms of that this pie enhances our Kedusha. It doesn't, it can't create Kedusha. Where is Kedusha created? Kedusha is only created through Gufa Kedusha, i.e. Uh, Sefer Torah, Tzvil, and Mezuzah, that the Gufa Kedusha is the Sefer Torah. So, the Shaila, we talk about the Mishkan, where does the Mishkan get its Kedusha from? So, the Rav points out, and the Ramban, and others, it's called the Mishkan Ha'edus. The only reason that the Mishkan has Kedusha, but it housed the Luchos. It's the housing of the Luchos, the Aaron Kodesh, the to- which is the Torah, that gives it the Kedusha. So the whole reason for the Kedusha of the Beis HaMikdash, of the Mishkan, is because it housed the Luchas. Ah, so what about the second Beis HaMikdash, the Rav asked? There was no, you know, one of the things, the difference between Bayez Rish and Bayez there was no Luchas. That's what Rav Salvesh explained. Why is the Rambam going to, why do we care what Shlomo HaMel did with the, you know, with the Luchas? Like, why is it a his, you know, why do we care? Why is it important? You know, why is it a history lesson? Because the answer is the Ram is not just giving me, he's telling me halacha. He's telling me, you know what, how does the base Bayashani keep its Kedusha? 
is only because the ruchas are housed underneath there. It's Torah that gives everything the Kedusha. And that's the Pshat. Um, and, and therefore, that's why the Chazal tell us that in Nida, that before a person's born, that taught the Kola Torah Kulo. And then they get a little pachi when they come out. What's the point of they're going to forget everything? Because so it is, every Jew becomes a Gufa Kedusha. And therefore, because of that, um, we got us, you know, therefore it's like, it's going back and reviewing, you know, stuff that we forgot. And that's the Pshat of Asu Aaron is in Russian, Russian Rabim. The other, when it talks about the other Kalev, it's, it's in uh, Russian Yachid. It's more like, uh, what's the difference between Russian Yachid, Russian Rabim? Russian Yachid is, it's on the base thing, it's on like, you know, the, on, a, on like uh, this, this, the leaders of the Jewish people. But like it's b'svar tem lachem, but by lashon rab and moshe zeh with svi lachol echa v'yechad. So when it comes to other kelim which are just a hechsher, then you know as long as the kohen or the people set it up. But people think you know who's Torah? That's for the kohel people, the rabbis. But it's not for me. I don't have time because I can't learn Torah. That's what the Gemara need is telling every Jew can learn Torah. That's because you were taught the Torah, and that's what it, that's what the it's in asu aron and say shitim and lashon rab and lachol echa v'yechad. And if you don't believe Chazal, maybe you believe the IRS. The IRS, and that's, that's the equivalent of Revenue Canada in the States. I'll conclude with a story from Revenue Canada, um, from the IRS. Hope Revenue Canada recognizes this as well. There's a concept that um, you may or may not be familiar with. It's called Mance. I think it's called Mance here. The clergy discount. There's a manse here, and there's, um, it's called something else, manse and something else. I forget the other name. Of, I think it's called manse here. I forget what it's called in the States already. So, but there's a clergy discount where you could take off. It's much more liberal in the States. What you could take off, how much, you know, the rental of your house, other things, you know, and those that speak to your local account about the different rules. So there's a landmark case. I think it's Silverman versus, I don't know, IRS, whatever. So the issue was, so what's, what's typically clergy? It was clergy like the priests. They used to live in the, the domains there, rabbis, shul rabbis. So I guess the, the Shiloh was teachers in yeshivas, rebbeim, teaching in yeshivas. Are they allowed to take off mans? So that was the, or whatever it's called. Um, so, so basically, you know, I was, so the IRS did their research and they concluded that they concluded, yes, they said, we did our research, Judaism is different than all or many other religions. By other religions, it's just that the, the minister, the priest, they have to know everything. You go to them and they answer questions. But in Judaism, everyone, I don't know how deep they went into it, but I'll just um, embellish it, that every Jew is obligation to learn and sit and learn and know their own thing. So therefore, our a teacher, a rabbi in the day school is a, is a, is, does fall under the, under the rubric of man's. But that's the Pshat Asu, and that's what Chazal, Asu Aron Asay Shitim, it's, as we mentioned, it's the Torah that gives us our Kedushas Aguf, and that's a mitzvah for everyone, not just for the Yechidei Skula, you know, whether you should be sitting in Kol all day learning, that's a separate discussion. But everyone has to learn, you know, Everyone has to find time, and because that's where we get our kedusha, and that's what the chasam sof is. You saw it is. That's why, in fact, that's why v'chayim v'loshet. That's why we have a chi of kfura, because of the that we learn Torah, and, and that gives us the kedusha. That's why it's a machokes in the rishonim whether the corpse of a guy is metami or not. So that so that's one of the issues, you know. So um, sort of, and then hence whether it's chayiv and kfura. So v'chayim v'loshet writes it's not because. Only someone, because you have all the if you have all the mitzvahs, there's no kedusha. Yet you need to, to in order to be chayiv and kfura, you have to have Torah. And therefore, a guy is chayiv, a Jew is chayiv and kfura, a non-Jew is, and it gets into the whole issue of getting hana. The um, the Vilna Gon, um, I think the, the Vilna Gon might be machmir, but but Lamaisa for medical reasons, um, it was a case of people um, were makel in terms of, of using, getting Hanar from a Macy Akam, if it's medicinal reasons, it's a Machokit, we've shown him, 
But that's the that's the Yisod of Malechus HaMishkan near Shabbos to teach me Shabbos is Docha the Mishkan, and we know from the Gemara in Yuma Pikuach Nefesh is Docha Shabbos, and the Chassid Sofer connects the dots, and and hence the Pikuach Nefesh is certainly Docha the Mishkan and the Mikdash, and hence the Chashivas of every year everyone has to realize you know Kedushas Aguf is the highest level.